I'm Anil Mull. Um, thank you for joining us uh, for the CSC edition of Hashtag Finance, which is our podcast. I am sitting down with Hugh Rogers, Hugh, the president and CEO of X Fidos uh, Therapeutics. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? Hi, Neil. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Great. Uh, I remember last time we spoke was under different circumstances. I, I remember we did it on the street in Vancouver uh, at our office and, and talked. Uh, it's a gorgeous day here in the city. And uh, how, how are things? How's quarantine life, isolation? Um, uh, it's business as usual on your end, um, but why don't you tell me how you guys have transitioned from uh, the daily life of going in and things like that? Yeah, for the most part, um, it's been a fairly smooth transition because I work here in Vancouver with our CFO um, while we have operations at the University of Alberta, the faculty of pharmacy, and in Germany, two um, subsidiaries there, Vector Pharma and Bunker Plant Extract. So everything in Germany continues, um, business as usual, clinical programs uh, moving forward. Um, the only, I guess, uh, complication has been the University of Alberta. Uh, the lab there is temporarily um, shut down, and that's not exclusive to us. The entire university is down, but it's actually given us an opportunity to make some uh, changes to the clean room uh, mechanically to allow us to bring in some different extraction equipment nice. and chillers. So it's there's pros and cons, but I think for the most part, we've been able to to uh, continue as planned. Business as usual. Hugh, um, before we get into a lot of the um, details of the company, there might be a few listeners who are, might not be familiar with the company and what you guys do. Um, from, from what I know and, and, and on the website, your tagline is bridging the gap between traditional cannabis-based meds and modern scientific approaches. But why don't you give us a little elevator pitch on the company and what you guys do and throw out your ticker in there as well. Sure. So X Phytotherapeutics, uh, XPHY on the CSE, um, started as a cannabis company, but the approach we took, I think, was different than most. So we came to it from a scientific perspective. Um, we have deep expertise in, um, in drug delivery, in um, non-conventional, so phytochemical um, medicine, and as it turns out, an infectious disease as well. As well. So we do not grow, we're non-cultivators. So we focus on product development, uh, clinical programs, drug delivery, um, and European markets. So when we participate, for example, in Europe, the, the, one of the business lines that we're pursuing is the import of extracts and flour. So this is, it's really, cultivation independent in the sense that we've sought out um, top growers uh, when it comes to flour from Canada, um, extracts from South America. And uh, we're able to, I think side, side, we've been able to sidestep um, a lot of the, um, call it the negativity surrounding uh, large cultivation operations, particularly in Canada. Got it. So, so through that, sort of a, a summary on the company. And before that, you mentioned you have a couple of collabs. Uh, one was uh, Bunker Phytopharma, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So uh, in English, in it's Bunker, Bunker Plant Bunker. Extracts. I'll let you speak about that. Right, so Bunker Plant Extracts holds the only um, cultivation and extraction license for research and, uh, research and scientific purposes in Germany. So it's quite a unique license. Um, Bunker has a long-term lease on a large um, facility. It's actually a former Cold War nuclear bunker and that is currently in the permitting um, stage for renovations. Uh, that's one of our two subsidiaries, the other being uh, Vector Pharma TF, which is, um, is proven to be an exceptional acquisition. Um, deep expertise in drug delivery, thin film, um, ODF, so oral dissolvable films, and uh, transdermal patches. And their platform is really, um, it's not specific to cannabis. In fact, they have a number of clinical programs underway in, in non-cannabis uh, conventional 
um, applications are narcotics. So these include pain management. Uh, we have a clinical program underway um, for a neurology application, uh, as well as uh, cannabis. So we've got uh, quite a few moving parts um, just on the cannabis side, and then recently added, um, given our expertise, added some, um, some programs of infectious disease. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, you guys signed a, um, uh, it was an agreement, correct? Correct uh, For, uh, with the Technical so initially, University of Munich, correct? So the Technical University of Munich. You guys signed a, an, an agreement to kind of do some R&D on uh, infectious disease treatment. That's right. So we have a, a very good relationship with TUM at Technical University of Munich and a number of different collaborations. So we have a cannabis collaboration um, for, uh, uh, I would say more on the biochemistry side. Um, we have a, an exclusive collaboration with their, with Wine and Stefan um, for food and beverage development. And we've just recently added um, a collaboration for infectious disease. So this will be the study of, um, but essentially pathogen host cell interactions and um, evaluating those for potential therapeutic targets as well as diagnostic targets. So it's a pretty exciting um, development. Got it. And it's been, a, it's been a, a, an exciting month for you guys as well. Um, you've, you've had a lot of news over the recent weeks. I, I think it's been a continuous flow of news. Um, are you able to talk to us a little bit about your recent developments other than what you've just uh, kind of dove into? Sure. So we've added a third, let's call it a third pillar to our business. Um, the first being drug delivery, the second being um, imports and European imports in particular, and the third now infectious disease. So as it turns out, um, our scientific team has uh, very strong have very strong backgrounds in infectious disease, um, antiviral therapeutics, um, and um, our partner at Technical University of Munich is actually a specialist um, in pathogen host cell interactions. So we've we're under a binding standstill uh, right now with a German biotechnology company. Uh, focused on diagnostics. So they have a number of products under development um, for what we would call non-pandemic non related pathogens, uh, oral health and um, some other applications. I can't give away too much uh, given that we're, the deal is closed, uh, but we hope to have news out on that very soon. So we are working together to develop develop a uh, real-time uh, distributed testing platform. So this would be, um, this would require no laboratory. Um, it's an oral test, saliva-based, and um, it's something that I think we're, we're really excited about and we hope to have news out uh, in the next few days. I can't, I can't tell you too much about it just because it's, it's such a unique um, technology. Yeah. Um, I, I, I understand. I, I would highly recommend our, our viewers and listeners definitely keep up with the company. I know you guys have been trading since uh, uh, August of 2019 and you've had quite a, quite a nice run there. Speaking about these tests, you. You, um, out of curiosity, how long would this actual test take to give you a result? You said they're oral um, tests that people take. Right. So the existing products... Um, in development, they're instantaneous. So the feedback oh. is within 10 to 20 seconds. And what goes into manufacturing something like this? So that's a, a bit of a twist on the synergies uh, between our two companies. And given our expertise in um, thin film, in particular oral dissolvable films, there's an opportunity to use this technology um, which is essentially a biosensor and print that onto a, an oral film. So it will be ultimately what we're seeking to develop is a, a thin film biosensor with immediate uh, feedback. Interesting. And, and what would, 
are you able to talk about the costs for something like this? Not, not just on the manufacturing side, but um, um, from a consumer standpoint as well. Yeah, I hesitate to go that far into okay. it. Um, I, I think I can say that for a screening test, and this would be, and just to clarify, this is not a diagnostic test, this would be a screening test um, with a lower threshold to entry into the market and regulatory approval. To make a screening test successful, it has to be low cost. So this would be a mass production, low cost, uh, distributable technology. And I think you know the market for something like that is enormous. If you think of schools, uh, workplaces, borders, um, uh, airlines, you name it, uh, whether it's subway systems, um, the potential to, um, to mass distribute uh, tests, it, it's an enormous market. So this is something we're pretty excited about. Um, and I think the important thing to remember, um, and one of the reasons we were so attracted to this opportunity is that it's a platform. So this is not just a one-off. They have a number of products in development right now. Um, our focus would be to build out a portfolio of um, pandemic uh, tests. Yes, got it. I know, I know COVID-19, the pandemic has been dominating headlines right now. Um, I wanna take it back a bit. Um, Previously, you guys were working on a cannabis oil-based epilepsy product. Um, it recently had moved to clinical studies. Can you give us an update on, on where you're at with that? Right. So that, um, that is an ODF, so oral dissolvable film. Um, that will be in clinical studies um, in, the, in the coming months. So the product itself um, on schedule for development um, I, I can't say too much <laughs> on that one. We will also have some news out. Um, we expect in the next 30 days. Or well, so. I, I definitely got it. I, I look forward to when uh, you guys have more announcements around that, because it was really interesting to see, see uh, companies working on a product like that, uh, that treats epilepsy. Um, what about the beverage market? Do you have any um, sort of insight on that? You, you guys set, have some sort of a partnership with the Bavarian Brewing and Beverage Institute? That's right. So that is part of the Technical University of Munich. Okay. Uh, we have three collaborations there. That is one of them. So that gives us access to a world-class uh, research and development facility. And we have initiated work there. Um, we are also in discussions with some industry partners. So I think ultimately, we would like to, to, I think ultimately we would like to have a three-way uh, development program for beverages, um, food and beverage in Germany. And that's something uh, we hope to also announce in the next, say, 30 to 60 days. <laughs> well, you know, so. once you have all of these announcements out, maybe we can get you back on, on an episode of Hashtag Finance and we can dive deeper into um, some of the announcements that you guys make. Um, yeah. Well, maybe I can just speak generally. So when I mentioned our three business lines uh, being um, clinical products and drug delivery and then imports. And I think within that import business, um, there's opportunities both on the wholesale, wholesale and retail product side for uh, CBD consumer products. So those would be food and beverage, whether it's cosmetics, say pet foods, those are all um, opportunities that we're exploring and pursuing um, as we speak. So I, I think there's, um, I spoke sort of very generally about three, three pillars of business, but there's, there's many opportunities under each of those. Completely. You guys have a very smart team. How's Chris keeping up, by the way? Chris, our CFO, he's doing well. He's uh, buried in year-end financial statements right now. <laughs> well, you can, you, can, you can tell him we say hi. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to kind of uh, educate our listeners, uh, potential shareholders or existing shareholders on? Well, I think it's important for people to understand that we really are a science and call it biotechnology, biopharma company first. So we didn't come to the industry through cultivation. We came to it from a clinical research uh, perspective. So it allows us to 
I think, move quite quickly into other areas of science, whether that's infectious disease or um, other types of phyto-nutraceutical type medical applications. Uh, we're quite nimble. We're small. We move quickly. Uh, we're able to keep our burn rate low. We avoid any type of large infrastructure investment, i.e. cultivation facilities. Um, so I think we're able to leverage our expertise, uh, which is science. And that's, I think that's the message is that we have, we're cannabis, but really we're, we're science first. And that opens up a, a whole world of opportunity. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely um, interesting times for you guys, your team, your, the expertise you guys have kind of all put together to still be able to uh, continue on with your core business, but also kind of uh, 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 sidestep a little bit to call it that and work on these new technologies and, and, and delivery systems and, and for testing COVID and stuff like that as well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think we're, we're so fortunate to have um, a phenomenal world, you know, world-class scientific team from Dr. L Dr. Lovenberg at the University of Alberta. We have Dr. Becker, uh, Managing Director of, of uh, Vector. We have uh, our partners at Technical University of Munich, Dr. Eisenreich. Um, and within that network, uh, which is global, uh, it's Asia, North America, Europe, Germany in particular, um, pr some pretty exceptional opportunities have presented themselves. What, what goes into putting a team like this and expertise together? Um, like what, what's your approach like? Well, I think, well, I think within the, those, you know, at least the scientists we're working with, they've, you know, their interest has been in cannabis or was for years, but I think, um, like like us, they wanted to avoid growing. So their interest was not cultivation. It was really drug development. And I think finding the right financial partners, I think for them um, was maybe a challenge. And then given that um, most of our team is, is based in Europe. In fact, even our, our Canadian scientist, uh, Dr. Lobenberg is German uh, by background and by education. Um, there just weren't that many opportunities in Germany. So we were a first mover there. And because of that, I think um, we were able to assemble a, you know, quite an impressive team. Great, great. Uh, Hugh, is there, is there anything else that you want to kind of talk about? Because um, what, what I was going to say is, uh, you know, I would, I, and I've said this earlier, I'd recommend our users to definitely follow your company. Where they can find, where can we find more details on Spido and YouTube? So I think um, given how quickly our company moves, I think our, our news releases are probably the best place to start. Um, you know, we tend to to put out news every, let's say two weeks or so, and it, it's generally fairly substantial and we intend to continue that um, into the foreseeable future. So we move, like, as I said, move quite quickly and I uh, like to keep our shareholders updated. Uh, I think I think you guys are definitely doing your part, Hugh. I look forward to having you back on the podcast um, in, in the near future. Talk about some of your re uh, uh, development and successes as well. Um, how was your Easter long weekend? It was great. Thank you. Just uh, probably like most people, hunkered down at home <laughs> with yeah, uh, with happy. the family. Well, great to hear, Hugh. Um, again, I would highly recommend our users to definitely. Um, Subscribe to our podcast. Um, it's available on on uh, all your favorite channels that you might listen to podcasts on. Uh, if you like videos better, you can definitely follow CSC TV on YouTube. Uh, we've got all our content on there as well. And um, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to both Hugh and myself. Hugh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for your time. Best thank you. Always a pleasure. Great. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.